you have an object. And he's had a few drinks. Just make it a bit easy to see. And he's sort of rotated this way and that way. He's leaning over to the side, a bit like that. Okay, so again, once again, this guy has rotation values in all three of the HPB. Uh, which, by the way, just in case you're not aware of what these are, HPB, heading, pitch, banking. Think of it like an aircraft. There's the compass direction, the heading. There's pitch whether it's sort of leaning forwards or leaning back, diving or climbing. And then there's banking, whether you're tilting left or right as you go around a corner. Anyway, because I've sort of rotated this guy's heading, I've made him lean forwards, and I've tilted him to the side, he has all of these HP, HPB values. And this can make animation a little bit tricky. Now, we've already seen that freeze transformation can help, can be a solution, um, but it's not always going to be the answer, and this quaternion option could be more straightforward. Watch this. When I rotate this guy from here to here, visually, I'm rotating one angle. I'm just going from there, round to there. But once again, look at these numbers. They're all flickering around and changing, because although this guy is only rotating on one axis... I'm actually really doing three things. So consider this. He starts off facing north. He's leaning to the left. And he's leaning forward slightly. Well, even though I've only rotated one axis, remember, he was going forward, left, and north. With one rotation, he's now facing south, right, and backwards. So one rotation can change all three descriptions. And that's what this, this HPB is. This is a description of north, south, east, forward and back, left and right. And one rotation can actually change all three of those. So we're going to have a problem if we try to animate this. Watch, watch this. If I record this and I say start there and just rotate around one axis like that. Again, keep in mind, I haven't rotated one axis. I've actually changed all three. So when this guy rotates, he'll lean up, stand upright, spin round a bit, lean over to the right, and then he's back down in place again. So even though he started here and he finishes here, you might think, well, clearly the shortest route is not this. And you'd be absolutely right. But mathematically, we're just going from one value to another. The problem is that involves all sorts of weird complex movements in between. Well, this is potentially where quaternions come in to save the day. A quaternion rotation, again, keeping it nice and simple, is just to take the shortest route. That's it. That's all a quaternion is. Take the shortest route. So rather than doing this big elaborate spin, pirouette, and then back down again, if we turn on quaternions, beep, it'll now do this. Yay! It takes the shortest route. It just does the shortest, simplest A to B it possibly can. So again, you might be thinking, well, if this is so great and this is so simple and straightforward, why is this not turned on by default? And it's at this point I have to tell you the big stinking downside of this option. Because you only ever take the shortest route from A to B, that does mean certain rotations, certain movements, are just simply impossible. Maybe, with this nice fresh new guy here, maybe I want him, over the period of my animation, I want him to spin around sort of once, twice, sort of two and a bit times. So this is my animation. Once, twice, stopped. So this could be the propeller on an aircraft or a helicopter. This could be a bit of machinery spinning round. It could be any one of a million things. You can't do this with quaternions. Because keep in mind, the starting point is here. And the ending point is here. Well, you can probably already guess what's going to happen. The shortest route from there to there is not to spin around twice. The shortest route from there to there, if we turn on quaternions, is that. 
So the problem you've got with a quaternion rotation is the the most you could ever conceivably rotate anything is about 180 degrees. The only way with a quaternion I could actually get him to spin would be, right, bear with me here, would be to rotate him just under 180, add a keyframe, spin him a bit more, just under 180, add a keyframe, add a keyframe, add a keyframe, and then I think we're safe with that last bit. So with a quaternion, this now can work because it's going from keyframe A, B, C, D, E, F. We've had to add loads of waypoints along the way for this quaternion system to, to have any chance of working. So yeah, there you go, that, that's the downside. You can't spin an object around with full control with quaternion rotations. You might want to use it for a lot of stuff because it does simplify things. You don't get these funky rotations. This is especially, by the way, good for camera animations. If you're trying to fly a camera through a building, it's quite easy for you to accidentally start gimbling and spinning your, uh, your camera around all over the place. By the way, if you've ever heard of gimbal lock, that's what this is all referring to. Um, so yeah, you might want to try using quaternion rotations if you're doing a camera animation, because that will often make your life far easier. Just don't try and spin the camera around more than 180 degrees in one single keyframe, which ideally shouldn't be something you're trying to do anyway, otherwise your audience is going to throw up and be sick because you're throwing them through a tornado. Right, okay, there we go. There's our quaternions. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this little tip. Uh, this was a short section from my new keyframe animation training series. If you would like to see more, if you'd like some more advice, head on over to 3D Fluff and take a look at the full offering.